right, so today we're talking about um, the um, fluid dynamics, basically. So we've been talking a lot about how, uh, how we can deal with fluids that are, um, th that are stationary. So we've been doing lots of what are called fluid statics. Now we're going to actually let fluids move around. So um, and this, it turns out, has a ton of applications that are going to be really um, interesting. Um, of course, just simple things like um, how we get water out of a faucet, um, things like that. Um, hoses, uh, spraying water, things like that. Um, but also, uh, actually, how plane wings work, um, and how uh, how how sailboats uh, actually work. Um, uh, we'll also find out why it's a really bad idea to stand too close to a a moving train or a metro um, as they're as they're flying by. Um, and finally, uh, we'll even uh, talk. We can even we can even use this stuff to. Um, understand uh, why uh, tornadoes always rip the, t the roofs off of houses. Um, so lots of really interesting uh, applications, um, but first we have to learn how it works. So <clears throat> there are actually a few different things we're going to be learning today. Um, the first one is what's called the continuity equation. And, and this is actually a really simple, uh, it, it, you know, it, it almost isn't worth calling an equation um, uh, because it, it's it's based on just a very simple idea, which is that um, basically whatever goes into the one side of a let's say a tube or a pipe has to come out of the other side. Um, and and the the real basic way to think about this is is if you see this little plug uh, that we have here of um, of water, uh, um, if you have that little plug of water uh, moving along at some speed. Uh, if the pipe all of a sudden gets smaller, um, for that same amount of water to get out, because um, it's being pushed by the, the, the fluid behind it, it has to go faster. Um, and it turns out it has this really natural um, equation that, that, that pops out of this, which is just that A1V1 is equal to A2V2. The other way to think about that um, is that the, um, uh, the, the volume per second that's going through any part of the tube um, is is equivalent. So so in other words, the volume uh, per time that's moving through the tube is is always constant. And again, this is this isn't anything um, special. All it means is that if I have uh, th you know three gallons per second coming in the left side, I have to have three gallons per second coming out of the right side. And since that area is smaller, for three gallons uh, on the right side, for three gallons per second to come out the right side, it has to be flowing out faster then uh, it's flowing in on the left side um, with, that has the big area. And that's the whole idea. It's called the continuity equation. It, it, it means uh, continuous basically means that, that, that you're not losing any water or gaining any water or liquid or whatever we're talking about. Um, so that the, the volume that comes in is, is the same as the volume that's coming out. Um, so we can just do a really quick example about this. Um, let's assume we have 0.1 cubic meters per second of water coming into our, our um, in, into the left side, or about a gallon per second, um, and it's pumped into a, 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 for some reason, a very large pipe that I've created um, uh, of a meter squared. Um, so it's a, it's a really, really big pipe. Um, uh, and then um, it comes out uh, of a, a still quite large pipe, um, but a slightly smaller pipe uh, that has a diameter of, um, uh, uh, of uh, half or sorry that has a um, an area of a half meter squared um, and what we want to know is how fast is the water going into the large part of the pipe the left side and how fast is it going out of the small part of the pipe okay that's the whole idea so um, again uh, the the actual um, the the your book uses a, a, a variable called Q uh, which um, is the flow rate basically or the volume rate um, uh, and so this is our point uh, this is our one gallon per second or our 0.1 meters cubed per second it's basically how fast how much water is flowing into one side or how much water is flowing out of the other side the other way I think about it, it's um, uh, it's how fast you'd be filling up you know like gallon milk containers if you had the if you were filling them up at one end or the other um, so um, to just see where we get this, the equation I just showed you, um, if you take this flow rate and divide it by the area of the pipe, let's let's just do the left pipe for instance. Um, if you divide that by the area of the pipe, you get the volume per area. Okay, 
um, uh, on, uh, and then you know you still have your one over second. Now, if you take volume divided by area, okay, what you're left with is just distance. Um, and so now you've gone from so when you've gone from q, which is a volume per second, but then when you divide by area, you get a distance per second, okay, and that's just the velocity of the water, okay. And so basically, the way that we can get how fast uh, the water is flowing is just divide by the divide the area or the the volume of water that's moving through the pipe each second um, by uh, the um, uh, by by the area of the pipe. So again, I said that we're, we're having about 0.1 cubic meters per second, or about a gallon per second coming in the pipe from the left side. And I said that the area of that pipe is a, is a square meter. Now if we just divide that 0.1 cubic meter, per, uh, meter cubed per second divided by one meter squared, uh, we just get uh, 0.1 meters per second. Um, and that's, that's the velocity, it's basically the speed that the water is moving through the left side of the pipe. Um, we could go through and do the same thing. Um, Q stays the same no matter what. Q doesn't actually change as we go through the pipe. Um, but, uh, um, and we could divide it by A2 and get a different velocity, but we could instead we can just use our, our equation A1V1 is equal to A2V2, which is basically an equivalent equation um, to Q is equal to Q. Um, and using this equation, we can find that V2 is just A1V1 over A2. And then again, plugging in our numbers, one meter per second, 0.1 meter per second, and uh, sorry, one meter squared, 0.1 meter per second. Um, that's just area one times the volume times the velocity one. And then just dividing by the, the new area, the area of a two, uh, which is half the area of the of the first one, we get that the speed goes up by a factor of two. So in other words, we've decreased the area of the pipe by a factor of two. And we've increased the velocity of the water in the pipe by a factor of two, which all makes sense. Um, basically, uh, you have the area, you double the velocity. Okay, so basically, if we look at that pipe, the water will be moving twice as fast to the right side as it is to the left side. Um, okay, so now we need to add, uh, now we're going to add something else new, which is uh, pressure. So pressure has kind of been the thing that we've been talking about the whole time. Um, it turns out uh, that for a fluid that is all at the same height, like we have uh, in the in the figure above, um, we have that the pressure one plus one half rho v one squared. So that's just one half the density times the velocity squared uh, is equal to p two plus um, uh, one half the rho times the velocity two squared. Um, what this basically is telling us is that the pressure in a specific um, in a specific uh, area or in a, in a specific part of the tube is dependent on how fast the how fast the the fluid is flowing, and it turns out that the faster the fluid is flowing in a certain um, in a certain part of the tube, the lower the pressure is. Okay, and you we'll see that in this next example. So. Let's take this the same example we had before. We have the point one, uh, one gallon per second coming in the left side. Um, uh, we have a one meter um, squared area um, in the left side, a half meter squared area in the right side. And now we're gonna ask what's the pressure in the left side versus the pressure in the right side? And in particular, uh, which one's higher? So we'll do this by, try, by first writing down our Bernoulli equation, um, which is just giving us the relationship between pressure and velocity. Um, and then I'm just going to rearrange this so in, so we're finding the difference between P1 and P2. So basically we're trying to find uh, the pressure in the, in the left side minus the pressure in the right side. And so if this ends up being a positive number, it means the pressure in the left side is higher. If it ends up being a negative number, it means the pressure in the right side is, is higher. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we can see immediately we get this weird uh, result, which is that the pressure, um, the P1 minus P2 is equal to basically um, uh, V2 squared minus V1. So in other words, the, the one that has the larger velocity is going to have the lower pressure, if that makes any sense. So if the velocity in two is higher, which we know it is, then the pressure inside one is higher. This again goes back to, the, to what I was saying before, which is that um, when 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 liquid or something is moving faster through a certain part of the pipe, um, the pressure is lower. Okay, 
Um, and so we can go ahead and plug in our numbers. We already found the velocities um, in the different pipes in the, in the last part of the example. We found that it's going faster, or twice as fast, basically, in the second part of the pipe. And so we just plug in the density of water. Um, we put it into our equation. And we find that basically the left side, the, the pressure in the left side, is 15 pascals higher than the pressure on the right side. Now that isn't that much of a difference, but the also the, the water isn't actually flowing that fast. Um, it's, it's only flowing 0.2 meters per second because I made my pipe so big. Um, so it's just a small difference in pressure, but it's a, you would be able to measure this. So there's a difference in the pressure basically between the left side and the right side, and the place where it's flowing faster is higher. So in other words, uh, P1 is basically whatever P2 is plus 15 pascals, okay? So that's, that's all just looking at um, kind of the new stuff. This is the new stuff that we had um, basically that tells us first just the continuity equation, that if we take the area times the velocity, um, that's constant for all parts in a different flowing. And that also we can find out how that affects the pressure by looking at, um, uh, by looking at basically this Bernoulli equation that says P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared is constant basically so that's that's always the, the, the uh, um, equal to one another so um, but now we actually want to add in height as well if you remember from our from previous our previous class we found out that um, the pressure varies uh, with the depth you are in a um, uh, in, in, a, in a continuous liquid and then as you get higher your pressure goes down or as you get lower your pressure goes up so it turns out um, this just gets added to that same equation. So we get um, P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho G H1. So you go P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared plus rho G H2. Now this is, um, this is going to be a little confusing because um, now uh, these, um, these heights we're measuring are actually, um, uh, in this case, they're actually heights rather than depths. Okay, if that makes any sense. You remember before we were measuring the, the depth from the top. Um, now this is actually measuring it from the bottom. I don't know why they, they're constantly switching around how they do it. Um, but this is, um, this is basically how, uh, um, how we're going to, um, to do it. Um, and so what we find is that um, there are two ways that the pressure is higher on the left side than it is on the right side. The first reason that the pressure is high, and, and so I'm just going to use this equation and just solve for P1 minus two, P2. Um, the first reason that the pressure is higher on the left side is because as we saw before, um, the velocity in the second part in the right side is faster than the velocity on the left side. And so the, the pressure is going to be higher. And that's just what we did in the last part of the last, the, the, just, just the last example. But the other reason that the pressure is higher on the right side, uh, sorry, is higher on the left side than on the right side, is because the, the height of basically the right part of the tube is higher than the left part of the tube. So that when you basically do the subtraction, you actually get that um, the, uh, the, the pressure um, due to basically the extra gravity of um, the, the, the water on the left side by the right side also increases the pressure. So we have two ways that the pressure is increasing by the fact that we have extra water on uh, the kind of, kind of um, pushing on the left side from the height differential and we have the velocity difference. Um, so we can um, go ahead and again look at our same, um, our, our the same, the, the same, um, uh, Example we've been using, but now we're going to make the the right pipe uh, 0.2 meters higher than the left part of the pipe, and then we're going to ask what the difference in pressure is. Um, again, we just have Bernoulli's equation. Um, I'm just going to I'll just slowly solve. Uh, basically, I'll bring the P, uh, again. We're always doing P1 minus P2. Um, again, we'll group our our different terms together. Uh, so that um, so that we can get them in, a, in an easy to plug into calculator way, and then we'll just plug in our numbers. Um, we have our thousand kilograms per meter cube for our density in both cases, our 0.2 meter per second and our 0.1 meter per second for the velocities, 
and um, we know that H2 minus H1 is 0.2 meters, basically. Um, it's 0.2 meters higher um, in, in this case. And so when we do that all out and we work out the numbers, we find that um, uh, P1 is uh, 1,975 pascals um, higher uh, in pressure than P2. And almost all of that's coming from the height differential. Again, if you remember, the difference coming from the different velocities in this case was just um, was just uh, you know 15 pascals. Um, the difference due to the height differential of the of the two parts of the pipe uh, gives us you know a, another 1,950 pascals. So it's a much bigger effect. Um, that's basically all I have for you. Um, uh, I would recommend you going through. Uh, this is a really good one to check out your textbook. Uh, make sure you understand the basic definitions. Um, try some of the homework problems before you come in. Um, and we'll talk about it and see if we can uh, understand this and we'll do some some cool new problems uh, in class having to do with all those examples I talked uh, about uh, at the beginning. I hope that was useful uh, and uh, have a wonderful um, a wonderful day.